So yes, it's true. After 18 months, I finally got another motorbike. And in this video, I was going to explain the reasons why I had got this particular bike and how I was going to use it. And then I was going to go for a ride of about 50 to 100 miles and give you my first impressions. But you know what? On the first ride, I've gone and got a flat tire, so I can't do any of that. Can you believe it? The first time on a proper motorbike for 18 months, gorgeous sunny weather, given that it's been hosing it down for the last two weeks and it's going to hose it down for the next two weeks, my first ride out, I go and get a flat tyre. You couldn't make it up. But it's not the CL500's fault. In the 30 miles that I have ridden it, or rather the 20 miles with a fully inflated tyre, I did enjoy it and it is great to be back on a motorbike again. Probably worth telling you why I decided to buy a Honda CL500. Well, the first one is I can get on it just about and I can get my foot on the right hand foot peg given my ongoing mobility issues. And I wanted a motorbike that would kind of take me back to first principles. I wanted to be able to rev the engine out in the first four gears without going into orbit. And I wanted to get that visceral feel back again, you know, between clutch, revs, torque and gears. That's what I really enjoy. And that for me is a bike that has character if it allows me to do that. And I think from my very short ride, you know, literally 30 miles, 10 a mile, 10 miles of which was with a deflating rear tire. I can definitely say that I think it certainly will meet those expectations. I mean, you can rev this thing out and you're still only probably doing like 80 miles an hour. So, you know, that's absolutely great. So I bought the bike for B roads, bumpy B roads, B roads that have lots of gravel and dirt in them. I won't be doing any commuting on it. I won't be carrying any luggage on it and I won't be carrying a pillion. It's really just for B road fun. And after 30 miles, I think, you know, it's a bit of a short distance, but I think it might have been a pretty good choice. Another reason for buying the CL500 is the looks, and I actually quite like it. I don't think it's pretty. I think it's got a kind of simple utilitarian charm about it and it kind of reminds me if we're talking about toolboxes which we're not it kind of reminds me of the difference between a basic draper cantilever toolbox and a snap-on air cushion tool chest so this is the cantilever toolbox and i quite like it i think it lends it an air of distinctiveness and you know it does stand out a little bit and it certainly does polarize opinions now i do speak as a person that thought the suzuki b king was one of the most fabulous looking bikes ever so i do like a little bit of distinctiveness but yeah it's not beautiful but it looks quite interesting and as i say it's simple and it's utilitarian which for getting back on a bike after about 18 months is exactly what i need so yes 30 miles I get a puncture, here I am, waiting to be picked up. After those 30 miles, I'm so far I'm glad of the choice I've made. Not that you should take that with anything other than a pinch of salt at the moment, but it's nice and it's orange. And as you know, I do like my easy peelers and this is a perfect colour. Right, um, I'm going to see what happens and see if there's anybody on the way. Cheerio, bye. Right, okay, so the puncture has been repaired. It's an absolutely beautiful day, so I'm going to go out for a ride. Let's see what happens. Now, you may notice the little man bag that I've strapped to the back. Well, guess what? That includes a foot pump and a puncture repair kit. Once bitten, twice shy. So, you may ask, what am I doing sat on the ADV350 scooter? looking at my Honda CL500 and in my lockup in my garage. Well, guess what? The puncture repair failed. More of that later though, because I did manage to get a few miles in on the CL500 and I'll talk about the puncture later because it's still a little bit raw. So let's dive into the things that I really like about the CL500. So it's got a really light, consistent clutch. It's got a really light throttle. The gearbox is good and the front brake is very nice. It's strong enough, but it's also very progressive and it's actually got lots of feel at the lever. Now onto the important thing. So the engine is eminently thrashable. I mean, you can cane it in the first four gears. It seems to enjoy it and it's a lot of fun, but you don't see, but you're not going into orbit at the same time. 
But then conversely, you know, if you just feel like noodling around, you can also short shift it in the first four gears and it's absolutely fine. So it's a good chugger, but it's also great for thrashing. So it's perfect for those little bumpy B roads where you're not going any faster than 70 miles an hour. The other thing I've noticed about the engine, while admittedly it's very cool outside here in the UK, the engine doesn't seem to emit any heat. So I think it's going to be pretty good during the summer. And also there's no heat from the exhaust, which I think is pretty good. So what else do I like? Well, I like the chassis and the overall suspension and the handling package. I mean, obviously it's not a sports bike, but what the chassis does, it kind of speaks to you, speaks to you when you're riding. So most of the time it's very friendly, it's very neutral, it's very confident inspiring. But if you do start to get a little bit naughty, it kind of wags its finger at you but it gives you that feel well ahead of anything actually happening. So I really like that feeling from the chassis. Now, if this were a sport bike, that kind of typical Honda neutral handling could be described as a little bit boring. And it probably is on a sports bike because you want something kind of more aggressive with tons more feel. But on a bike like this, it's exactly what you need. And again, it's absolutely perfect for whizzing around those bumpy B roads. So what else? The lights are bright, the mirrors are good, and all of the controls, as Motorcycle News used to say, fall easily to hand, and they're like really, really simple. So what else? I do love the traditional steering lock on the right hand side, and I also quite like the ignition being down on the left. But what I really like is the simplicity of the ignition. You know, none of that keyless nonsense, just shove a key in, turn it, and everything starts going. Brilliant. So finally, it's the overall simplicity of the thing. I mean, literally, all you do is get on it, turn it on, go and waz it around or go and plod it around, and then it's wash, rinse, repeat, probably until the next ice age. Simplicity and ease of use. Totally brilliant. Oh, and I should also add, you know, when pushing it around and stuff, it's really very, very easy to push around. So all of that adds up to a brilliant B-Road blaster, which is exactly what I bought it for. It's friendly, it's nice, it's confident, and the engine just gives you enough. And from an economy perspective, I'll check the clocks in a little bit, but from an economy perspective, I'm getting high 70s to the gallon, which is pretty good. Now, I've also done some riding on faster railroads, and while it will hold 80 miles an hour quite easily, I mean, the engine will sound a little bit busy, but it will hold 80 quite easily. I don't know, it sort of feels like a bit of a chore. You can definitely tell that it's a bit of a fish out of water. And I think the reason why it feels like a chore is that, you know, you know you're not exploiting the best of the bike's capabilities, which, as I say, is whizzing around B roads and bumpy little back roads and things. So it'll do it, it'll do fast A roads, but yeah, it's not the best place for it. And it is, as I say, feels like a little bit of a chore. So the stuff that could be better, well, as everyone says, the clocks or rather the clock is very dim and in bright sunlight, it's quite difficult to see what's going on. The positioning of the foot pegs, if you're paddling it around with your feet down, they do tend to be a bit of a shin cracker. So, I mean, I wear long boots or rather I don't wear short boots, so it's not a problem. But yeah, I can feel the foot pegs when I'm paddling it around starting to bang into my shins. So that's something to watch out for. There is also a bit of a tingle in your nether regions at certain revs. Now, I don't know whether that's because of the brown seat. I mean, some people will pay good money for it and it's not, you know, painful or anything like that. It's just something to be aware of. And then the other thing about it is it gets dirty very quickly and very easily. So if you look at the front mudguard, it's very, very short and you can see it just sprays everything up onto the radiator and the front of the engine. And likewise, over at the back, there's no hugger. So mud and grit and gravel and dirt and rain and whatever just goes all over the back of the bike and presumably all over the rider as well. And that's one thing I think from a commuting perspective, while the bike is great for commuting, if you're commuting in bad weather, which is kind of like most of the time in the UK these days, you're going to get covered in snot. So just something to be aware of. 
Now let's circle back to the looks again. I know I talked about this earlier, but let's circle back to looks. And I'm not trying to be controversial here, but I do really like it. And for me, it's a very refreshing change compared to most retro bikes that we see at the moment. I mean, personally, I'm a little bit over the Bonneville silhouette. I just want to see something a little bit different. And I'm really glad this hasn't absolutely got a Bonneville silhouette. You know, it looks a bit different. It, it probably is a little bit ugly in some places, but at least it's distinctive. And it's not following that rather tired and lazy design template of looking like a Bonneville from the side on. And it's wanting to get away from that Bonneville silhouette that made me not really consider the new Triumph 400s. And I think the other reason is with a bike like the Honda, which, as I've mentioned before, is kind of very utilitarian in its looks and in its nature. I kind of don't mind about thrashing it on snotty roads. I'm not too precious about it. Whereas Triumphs, you know, they're absolutely a premium product and I'd probably be a little bit more careful. But I wanted a bike that I was actively not too careful and not too fussy where I took it. So taking it along snotty roads that are covered in sheep shit, I'm absolutely fine with that on the Honda. On a Triumph, you know, I might be a little bit more careful and decide to go and ride somewhere else. What else about the looks? I've said it before, I do, controversially, I do like the muffler. I think it looks great. And I also think the end cap, you know, looks like some kind of venting flew off some scary industrial machine. I quite like it. Now, the bit I actively don't like is the underslung catalytic converter. Not just because of the position, but I don't know, it sort of looks like a python that swallowed a pig without chewing. Do pythons chew? I don't know. That'd be a good name for a band. Do pythons chew, touring Europe next year. So yeah, that's, I, I don't like that part of the exhaust, but the end part of the exhaust, the front part of the exhaust, I'm totally okay with. Oh, and I should mention the brown seat. So the reason why it's got the brown seat is because that's the higher seat, 30 millimeters higher. And when I was trying a number of bikes out down in Honda Newcastle, basically it was only with the higher seat that I could actually get on it and be comfortable with my right leg. So that's the only reason why the, why, why the brown seat is there. And it does kind of rock a little bit as though it's not too firmly attached, but you know, it's okay. It's not going to fly off, but it does move a little bit. So I do think the Honda CL500 kind of fulfills the brief of the original CL350 360s back in the 70s. You know, it's basic, it's utilitarian. You know, and what Honda did in the 70s was just basically take the equivalent CB350 and 360, stick a admittedly nicer exhaust on it, maybe did something with the suspension, you know, and that was basically it. And it was a bike that was designed for still having great road manners but also good for the occasional gravelly trail and that's exactly what this is you know it's got great road manners that's where it's going to spend most of its time but it's also all right for gravelly trails nothing worse but you know you don't have to be worried about going down snotty little b roads and things because it'll handle it quite well so value for money now this particular bike is an x demo model from honda newcastle which is why it's got some of those extra bits and pieces on it and i paid approximately a grand off list price so basically it's a 5k bike i mean that is an absolute bargain and just fabulous value for money obviously at retail whatever it retails at 6k it's less value for money but you know even at 6k you're still getting a lot of machine and a lot of engine and a lot of handling for your money so in summary then, I am thoroughly enjoying it. I know I haven't done a million miles on it yet, but that's because I've, I've had a bit of a puncture and flat tyre kind of situation, but I have done around 100 miles on it now and thoroughly enjoying it. And it fits my particular brief perfectly, which was a light manoeuvrable bike, which was going to get me back into biking after an 18 month layoff and was particularly good at hooning around bumpy, snotty B roads. And this is absolutely perfect for it. Certainly it does have limitations, but the thing is, if you exploit its good points, you're going to have a blast. You know, just don't expect it to be a high speed tourer, uh, giving you loads of weather protection. Obviously, it's not that. So in some ways, it is a very niche bike. You know, it's good for the B roads. It's good for just pottering about and discovering nice new places and going down nice windy little roads and without too much pressure. And I think that's the thing about it. It's a non pressurized motorcycle. It doesn't egg you on to go faster. It just eggs you on to have a really nice time. And you know what it sort of reminds me of? Well, 
back in the 70s when I was growing up, what we used to do is we used to drag old push bikes out of skips and hedges and stuff. And we take everything off that just added to the weight and didn't make it go faster. And then we'd strap on a ginormous pair of cow horn handlebars, you know, the bigger the better, like out here somewhere. And we'd call them trackers. And then we'd spend all day, all summer, just hooning around, building little ramps, and then going home at tea time, you know, for minor medical attention and some fish fingers. Absolutely brilliant. That's what this reminds me of. So if you were growing up in the UK, and you know what I'm talking about in terms of push bikes that you used to call trackers, that's what this is like. Or for the slightly younger generation, it's a BMX with an engine. It's cracking. It's brilliant. It's just good fun. No pressure whatsoever. OK, so that's it for now. I'm getting the tyre replaced later on this week, so hopefully I'll be able to do some more riding. But before I go, just a big thanks to Paul Dawson over at Newcastle Motorcycles for letting me sit on approximately 57,000 different bikes to see if I could fit on them until we eventually landed on this one. So pay them a visit. Really good bunch of folk down at Honda Newcastle. Right, that's it for now. Hopefully no more punches for the next 75 years. The Honda CL500. Yeah, it's a great little thing. Cherry bye.